So I've got this JBL Professional Speaker that came in to be looked at. It is an LSR 2300 Series JBL Professional Amplified Speaker. It has an XLR input, a quarter inch input, as well as an unbalanced RCA input. So let's go ahead and we'll give it some power, we'll fire it up, and see what it does. Okay, so looking over here at the PR57 Variac Isolation Transformer, when I turn the power on, I see that it does draw a small amount of current. So I've got my little MP3 player connected to it here that has some audio on it, and I have the volume turned up all the way on it. And I get absolutely nothing out of it. No hum, no anything regardless of what I put into it. So let's go ahead and tear it apart and see what's inside. Well, I see a circuit board, a transformer down inside. Let's go ahead and disconnect the plugs and try to get the circuit board out where we can take a look at it. Look at that, the connector is completely unplugged. Well, Oh, look at that, how loose it is. I plug it on, and it just comes off. Got to be something as simple as just having to have the connector recrimped. This one's pretty good. Oh, let's add a bit more attention to it. Now it's on there good. Well... Let's plug it back in and see if it works. Well, it's not that simple. Still no audio. All right, so here's a view of the circuit board. It's got two power amplifier ICs, TDA 7294, one for the low frequency and one for the high frequency. It's got a bunch of op amps in here. Not quite sure what they're doing, but look at all that. A couple of regulator ICs, some smoothing capacitors, bridge rectifier assembly, big, big bridge rectifier right here for the power amplifier, big filter caps right here underneath. can see the filter caps in there. i uh, got a couple fuses over here. I'll go ahead and check those and see if they might be open. I doubt it. So first off, because we're not getting any audio, I want to go ahead and check the voltages on these little op amp ICs right here and just make sure they have their positive and negative. They probably need about plus and minus 15 volts to operate correctly. But we'll go ahead and check that. If they're not getting their plus and minus 15, the power amps will never get any audio. And if that's the case, then we're looking at failures over here on these two regulators, which are probably plus and minus 15. Let me go ahead and fold them back and see if we can see some numbers on them. Okay, so this one is a 7915. That is a negative 15 volt regulator. This one right here is a 7815. That is a positive 15 volt regulator. So we can do some simple checks. See if we have our plus and minus 15 volts. Go into these little op amp ICs right here. Okay, so it's gonna be kind of hard to see, but I'm gonna start. The power is on. The transformer is connected. I'm going to start by measuring voltage on the filter capacitors, the big filter caps. So I've got 34, almost 35 volts on one, 34 volts, so I should have a total of 70 volts here, 69.6, pretty darn close. So let's go ahead and look at the regulators right here. So first, I'm just going to use this pad. I just want to make sure I've got continuity, and I do not. So I've got 21 volts going in.
and 1.7 coming out. That's not good. Minus 22 going in, and I have minus 15 coming out. That's good. So the negative regulator is doing just fine. Negative 22 going in, negative 15 coming out. The positive regulator, I've only got 1.6 volts coming out. So that's going to be the problem. Those op amps can't amplify unless they have the plus and minus 15 volts going to them. So I'm wondering, is the regulator bad? Or do we have a filter capacitor issue? They need to have an input and an output filter capacitor to operate correctly. Otherwise, they can break into oscillation. And if they start oscillating, they will try to regulate that oscillation down. And that's where you have problems. Okay, so I have my ESR meter connected. And let's go ahead and zero the leads out and make sure we get close to zero. And we do. I've went ahead and marked the positive leads on all four of these capacitors. So we'll check the input filter, half an ohm, that's good. The other input filter, about an ohm, that's probably acceptable. This is the minus 15 output filter, and I see just under one ohm. And this is the positive 15 output filter, and I see half an ohm. So the output filters are perfectly fine. I don't see any problem with those whatsoever. Now, as you've seen me do on previous videos, you've seen me unsolder the positive leads on these capacitors. And that's when it's in a switching power supply with a Pi filter network. Uh, this one does not have a Pi filter. It's just a simple plus and minus bridge rectified 60 hertz power supply with an input filter and an output filter. And so I'm going to say that 7815 is defective. I happen to have a replacement 7815. Although this one does have a metal back, it's not going to matter because they don't have these touching a heat sink or anything. So let's go ahead and slap that in there and see if we get our positive 15 volts back. So while I'm waiting for the soldering iron to warm up, let's go ahead and check those two fuses. They're 4 amp slow blows. Point 0.4 ohms, that was perfectly fine. And point 0.4 ohms, that one's perfectly fine as well. Now those feed the input power supply to the low frequency and the high frequency TDA7294s back here. Okay, as you can see right here, the new regulator is installed. I do not have it connected to the audio inputs, which are these jacks here. You can barely see on the lower part of your screen. I do not have the speakers connected, but I'm going to fire it up and just measure the voltage across the output filter capacitors and see if we have our plus and minus 15 volts. So here we go, power on. So this is the minus 15, and we have minus 1509. This is the positive 15, and now we have 14.95. Absolutely perfect. I think, just for the heck of it, I'm going to go ahead and change all four of these capacitors, because remember, these input filter capacitors checked between a half an ohm and an ohm, and they're 470 microfarad capacitors. They should be closer to zero. I wouldn't want to see more than a tenth or two of an ohm on these. Now the output filter caps seem to check pretty good. They were about a half an ohm as I recall. I've got a fresh set of 100 microfarad 25 volt caps. We'll go ahead and throw those in there as well. All right, new caps are in. Let's go ahead and give them an ESR input filter. Pretty darn close to zero. Input filter. Same thing, close to zero. These are the output filters. And about a quarter ohm. That's perfectly fine. And about a quarter ohm. So now the original capacitors were 470 at 35 volts. I didn't have any 470s at 35. So I ended up putting in some 680s at 35. That'll be perfectly fine. 
Um, they're good quality caps. I believe they might be Nichicons. I'm not quite sure, but they're going to do just fine. The output filters are just some, uh, I call them Chinacons. They're just generic Chinese crap, just like the ones that came out. These ones that came out were basically no name caps. Imagine Capacitor is the brand name. I'm sure they're all made by the same company, ChinaCon. Anyhow, we got those on there. I went ahead and I cleaned off all the black glue that was around them because that does become conductive over time. I will replace that with some hot melt glue, one of my favorites, as you know, combined with acetone, but we won't use any acetone on this one. But we will put some hot glue down there just to keep it from shaking loose with base. And uh, let's go ahead and fire it up and see if it's going to work. Okay, loosely assembled, powered up. Let's hit play and see what we get. It's working. All right, so I will go ahead and hot glue those capacitors in place, put it back together. We'll pump some YouTube copyright free audio into it and see what it sounds like. Okay, so I've got the capacitors hot glued down in place so they're not going to vibrate with bass. Next, I'm going to go ahead and reassemble it. I'm going to give it some audio. I'm going to let it heat up about 10 minutes or so. And I'm going to break out the infrared camera and measure the temperature on these regulators just to make sure that they are within reason. Okay, so I've got the infrared camera connected. But let's check the temperature of these regulators. The negative 15 volt regulator is 167 degrees. The positive 15 is 183 degrees. Now the absolute maximum limit on these regulators is 125 degrees Celsius. And that's 257 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm running in the 180 range and I have a piece of black tape attached to the back of each regulator because black tape is typically around 0.95 emissivity and that's what the camera is set to read. So this has been up and running about 10 or 15 minutes now and we're seeing about 185 degrees and 170 degrees. So that's well within the limits. I don't know why they didn't add a heat sink to this. I really think they should have. So like I said, I have a piece of black tape on the back of each regulator. And if I take the tape off, you'll see the temperature drastically changes. Now it's only reading 106. But I want to read down here where the high emissivity is, 178. Now this one's a plastic back, so it really shouldn't change much. Yeah, 170, it's about the same. So if you're going to use your infrared camera to measure temperatures, make sure that you have the correct emissivity setting. So like I said, a piece of black tape is typically about a 0.95. So let's just go ahead and put that back on real quick and you can watch the temperature change. Look at that. There we are, 185. But just as soon as I take that off, the metal does not emit heat as much as the tape does, so the camera can't see it. Anyhow, let's go ahead and put it back together now. All right, all back together, here we go. Well, I've got to say, it's got quite a bit of punch. I don't know what the power output is, but I'd say it's probably at least 50 watts per speaker. 50 watts for the woofer and 50 watts for the tweeter. It really does sound good. It's got some nice, clean, crisp audio. Anyhow, there it is, all back together. I hope you enjoyed the video on the JBL LSR 2300 series. 
professional powered speaker. I want to give a sincere thank you to those who have supported my channel with a donation via PayPal or by having me repair your unit. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel and liking this video. It really helps my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at NorCal715. You can email me, norcal715videos at gmail.com. Go ahead and leave me a comment, a question, a concern down below. I try to read all the comments and respond when I have time. Remember, with your help, we can keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everybody, thanks for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Have a great day. Bye-bye.